Hi everyone, this is Gerald Wheeler. So in uh, June and July 2019, family and I decided to do a road trip to the Eastern Cape to do a few of the passes in the area and just check it out. And so we went and we started off in a little town called McLean and we stayed in a cottage called the Blarney Stone Cottage. Really beautiful spot on a sheep farm. Has a little kitchenette. Has four rooms, two downstairs and two upstairs, all en suite with electric blankets. Very cozy and um, really a great place to stay when it's freezing cold. Has a gas fireplace and everything you need. It was really a top spot. We enjoyed it as a family there. Uh, we left one freezing cold morning and decided to head up, head, do a day trip and our starting point was Nordia's Neck. The road was pretty good, pretty good condition, looked like it had recently been resurfaced and so we enjoyed the open road. Beautiful scenery, just vast open areas, now perfect for a road trip, perfect just to get behind the wheel and enjoy the scenery. It was freezing cold to start off with but the day cleared up. The sun came out, the sky was blue, it was awesome. Um, we, we traveled up Nordia's Neck and just taking it easy as you can see the scenery and um, really beautiful and uh, this kind of road just begs for you just to take a stop every now and then, take in the scenery and uh, grab a cup of coffee on the side of the road. It's not a busy track by any means so you're not going to have cars flying past and covering you with dust. And um, so you can just stop anywhere just to bike or you can just get off the road a bit and uh, have a cup of coffee and then just take it all in. So really, um, just, you know, if you're wanting just to get behind the wheel and be out there, this is one of those roads you can just do that. So we really enjoyed that. Once we were finished with Nordia's Neck, we headed, we pointed ourselves towards the Tenerhead Lodge. And en route to Tenerhead, uh, we came across a, a chap with his tractor who had, battery was dead and they'd left the tractor in the middle of the road, so we couldn't get past him. So we offered to help him, uh, we pulled up the cruiser next to him and we jump-started that tractor and finally got him going and uh, he managed to then get out the way and we were able to get past him and move on. Tenerhead Lodge, what a little spot. Just tucked away deep in the mountains and it's just made out of stone. It's a real bit of work of art. And uh, so we decided to pop in there. Uh, I would say that if you are gonna pop in there and you're wanting to have a meal or anything like that, I would give them a call ahead of time. But they were quite accommodating, we, we popped in and uh, we sat down, we had a cup of coffee, hot chocolate, and just stretched the legs a bit. They allowed us to take a walk through the facility. They actually toured us through and just showed us um, what the Tenerhead Lodge is about. It's got a beautiful little library, roughly about 2,000 books in there. It's a real cozy place. It's actually a five-star lodge with a spa and uh, offers seven ensuite rooms. Um, with magnificent views from each room. So um, if that's your kind of thing, it's, it's, uh, it's worth a visit. Um, real beautiful spot. Uh, properly cold though. From Tenerhead, we decided to head up, well we continued our journey to Tiffendale. And this takes you along a very windy track with uh, drop-offs on one side, mountain on the other side and gets quite steep. As you continue, the road eventually winds around it and it gets to a point where they've put concrete strips on the road just because I would imagine in wet conditions um, it would be quite dangerous to, to travel up. So we um, just took it easy, it's, it's steep enough that you might want to engage, even engage low range. but. Um, yeah, so we, we, we did it, there was no hassle on this particular day, as you can see out of the concrete strips. And they continue for a while and they, they switch back, up and down, up and down. And it, it takes quite a while to get up to the top and eventually um, you plateau out and 
you will then see Tiffendale Ski Resort in the far distance. So you can you, you would need four wheel drive in case the conditions are slippery, and there are some steep sections, but um, could get there in a four by two, I suppose, but not on wet conditions. The roads are pretty good, and um, so you can just travel. When we went there, there was no normal snow. The snow that you see is a man-made snow made by the machines, the snowmaking machines at Tiffendale. And um, so we proceeded to Tiffendale, and um, we then did a very brief tour through the ski resort and this, and had a look at what there was to. To be seen there. So we got to this gate here and we paid our entry fee, we had to pay a fee in order to pass through there because to get to Ben McDewey you need to pass through this facility. So we paid our fee and uh, at the office there and then they allowed us through and we then continued up Ben McDewey. As you can see here the ski lifts for those who want to ski down although there wasn't much snow for that kind of thing. This is the route now to Ben McDew, a uh, gravel road, quite loose rock um, en route up to the top of Ben McDew, the highest point in Southern Africa. And um, so it's, it's quite a narrow track with a lot of switchbacks, up and down, up and down. It's loose, it's got a few bumps, sharp hairpin bends, but uh, all manageable. So we were in two vehicles and uh, we managed no problem. We just took it easy as you just keep climbing and climbing and eventually you get to the top. As you near the top of the drive to Ben McDewey, the summit, you eventually come to the final area where it becomes quite rocky and steep. To your left is a fence which borders on Lesotho and on this side you are still on the South African side. So yeah, as you can see it gets quite rocky and as you go further up um, you get some steep rocky sections. Uh, freezing cold wind blowing on us all the time but um, it was still uh, we were fortunate it was a clear sky day and we were able to see very far so we just took it easy as you approach the top and get closer to the final point there's a few steep climbs here and as you can see here low range is required it's loose and it's steep and it's far down on the right hand side and um, as you near the top you'll start to see multiple piles of rocks where people have built their own little pile to say well they've been here as you can see if in the distance ahead there you'll start to see the rock piles so we got to the top we had a walk around we built our own pile and took some pics and uh, just took in the view for a bit and then we we began our descent um, uh, it was it was really great time to be up there and we're, been there, done that now. This is the final top point. Plateau's out now, and you've just got to negotiate the rock piles uh, 
on this rocky path, 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 on the rocky path, and you go around the rock piles and you'll get to the sign that tells you that you're now at the highest point in southern, southern Africa and uh, you can then take a walk around there, have a look at things, see the view and take it all in. thousand and one meters highest pass in South Africa. We then descended from uh, Ben Jury and made our way through to a little town called uh, Rhodes and um, so we it, it's another you know you travel down this um, back down from Ben Jury along the path and then back onto a main gravel road, which then eventually leads you into the little town of Rhodes. Rhodes has a few shops, a couple of restaurants. There are there is accommodation there. There are backpackers, and if you're looking for accommodation, you can you will find accommodation there, and you can buy food. Is it one or two trade stores? And um, but uh, go prepared. Don't go with nothing if you're going to pass through there and you can always look it up on the internet to find places to stay but there are places to stay out there in roads a beautiful little town and um, we didn't stop in roads we kind of just passed through roads uh, on our way through to buster foot pass so we were just passing through interesting little place and uh, we were continuing because of time to make our way to buster foot pass Buster Foot is quite a way out from roads and on beautiful open roads again. Now it's uh, they were quite flattish, not too much hill climbing, but again I'm just struck by the vast open areas that you pass through. Just beautiful scenic um, areas. Perfect again to stop on the side of the road and grab a cup of coffee and something to eat and just take it in, which we did do often. Um, this time of the day we were quite late in the afternoon already and probably not the best time to tackle Buster Foot Pass so late in the afternoon but we were doing a journey which was, uh, it was part of a round trip around loop so it was already around half past four in the afternoon we uh, started so Buster Foot was discovered back in, in the 1800s and um, 1862 and I wouldn't recommend doing it on your own. If you do get stuck out here, it can take a while for someone to come and find you. So I would do it with someone else, definitely. It's slow going, it's very rocky, it has washouts. And if you were going to, uh, if it was wet, it would be even more tricky. So it was fun though. We really enjoyed it. We love doing this kind of stuff. That's why we do it. So even though it was late afternoon, we knew we were gonna finish this thing in the dark. But all part of the adventure. So we just continued taking it in slowly but surely and we headed our way down Buster Foot Pass and uh, it definitely has uh, some low range required areas and um, but that's all part of the fun. Absolutely magnificent scenery, rolling hills. You can find quite a bit of information on the internet about Buster Foot as well as other videos giving you more detail about the route um, it was fun. We did finish it in the dark uh, finally heading back towards McClare to get back to our accommodation at Blarney Stone Cottage and so it was a full day from when we left at 6 in the morning in the freezing cold and dark to arriving back at McClare by about 7 o'clock that evening um, in the freezing cold but nothing that uh, hot supper couldn't sort out in a good hot bath and we will had a great day and enjoyed our time thoroughly thanks for watching